Oh, never mind. It'll just, I'll have to edit. Hello, and okay. welcome back to Real Horror Show. I'm your host, Samantha, and I'm joined, as always, by the Stormy Skies. Hello. <laughs> that was, you're very energized. Usually you're a lot more mellow. I know, usually I'm like, <clears throat> hello. Hey. Hey. I just wanted to do something different and surprise you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're in a good mood because you got a car yesterday. Yeah. And you know what's cool about this car, Sam, is like, I don't know if you've experienced this. Um, is the car that you drive your second car or is it your first car? It's my second car. So when you got your second car, did you have like this feeling that you're like, this is my grown up car? Yes, absolutely. And that's why I feel so like, um, you know, like happy and stuff. Like, cause I was driving today and I was like, shit, I feel so much like a grown up right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so. Yeah. I mean, my experience is a probably different from yours because I'm assuming you use your real grown up money to buy the car. And my grown up car was a graduation gift from grad school from my parents. Oh, that's super cool. But still, it's my grown up car. David yeah. has my car from high school. And it's really weird when you get behind the wheel of any different car. It's like, I don't know how to fucking drive this thing. It's different. I don't like it. Yeah. And now I feel that way when I get behind the wheel of my old car because the brakes are so loose and mm -hmm. it's like a screaming metal death trap almost. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's the big thing going on in your life. Yeah, you guys, though, got, got a new car and it, it's pretty cool. It's bigger than my last car. And I feel like that's also a reason why I feel like it's more grown up because Ooh. it's just like larger. It's mm -hmm. like it's higher off the ground, you yeah. know. My other car was like, oh, fuck it. It was like a very yeah. small. It was yeah. very small. It was um, a small. <laughs> my my, my grown-up car is very small, and it kind of drives me insane. Mm -hmm. Because my first car, which David has, is a Sebring. And you wouldn't know it by looking at a Sebring from the outside. Yeah. But there is a lot of room in that car. Interesting. It is very spacious inside, and the trunk is huge. I moved out of my all of my dorms in two <laughs> trips with that car dude that's fucking awesome man yeah. i cannot say the same i thought my yeah. car had like a lot of space <laughs> like four trips uh does it have suicide doors dude no like how lame <laughs> every fucking car should have these goddamn doors because they're so stylish but they're also like very dangerous hence the name suicide doors <laughs> yeah. Can't fucking uh, see oncoming traffic. Yeah. Well, since I haven't spoken about it on mic since we started the uh, Twilight read through, I guess I'll talk about it now on the mini show since I didn't sign an NDA, so I can be transparent about the process of adapting my play into a movie and how yeah. I'm in a mood about it. Absolutely, um, it'd be very helpful for listeners who may be in the same like situation and may like to write plays or things. Yeah. I agree. Um, so I worked with my screenwriter acquaintance. Uh, I won't name drop. I feel like we were kind of doing it under the table because of the WGA. So I don't want to mm -hmm. get him in trouble. And we worked like collectively eight hours on the script rewrite to give them everything they wanted. Still wasn't what they wanted. So they bought me out. Mm -hmm. And I'm still 24% 20 owner of the LLC, to my knowledge. For all I know, they, di they dissolved that LLC. <laughs> Yeah. And created a new one to just kick me out. Damn but um, yeah. that being said, even though I'm only 24% owner of the LLC, I feel like there's a certain amount of disrespect with me not being informed of certain changes pertaining to um, the executive producer's movie, which is a uh, very annoying to read on mm -hmm. the public Facebook page. <laughs> Yes. Like, I don't, I don't give a shit what he says on his personal Facebook page. Like, whatever. Mm -hmm. But on our professional Facebook page, uh, maybe not. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a different thing altogether. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that's just where I am right now. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think the director is very talented. It will look good. And we have a soundtrack. And the oh, band cool. sounds really good. Um, we're getting one of their pre-existing songs and uh, they're writing one original song for the movie, which is really cool. And I actually really like their sound. They're a new band. 
Arlen Gun Club, but they have a very 90s tone to them. Cool name. <laughs> yeah, I would have I would have preferred a, a little bit of ska in there just because yeah, it's got that vibe so much, even with just the yeah. title. Like um like I knew they weren't gonna be able to use it for the credit scene, but since part of the rewriting process, um my acquaintance wanted to focus on getting it ready for a portfolio so I could send it out mm -hmm. as a work sample and just yeah. kind of show I know what I'm doing. I for the end credit song I picked a uh, 99 Red Balloons by Goldfinger nice. which which isn't one of their ska songs but bands like Goldfinger and other ska bands are just the 90s were the only time that type of music could have come out you know yeah that song is so 90s that yeah. that's a very good choice for for end credits because that's the song that people like really connect the movie to yeah and um I know if you're not familiar familiar with the song itself, you just listen to it, but don't really pay attention to the lyrics. It might be an odd choice. But the song is about two friends who are having a fun afternoon, and then they set off 99 red balloons, which causes a nuclear holocaust. Wow. So I think it's very <laughs> fitting for uh, a Y2K movie. Oh, absolutely it is. Yes. Because yeah. everybody was freaking worried about doomsday at yeah. that point dude so it's so fitting it's a great yeah. inclusion song it is um they also changed the title of the movie i'll wait until the movie's actually tangible to say publicly on the podcast what that is okay um, because who knows <laughs> it could still change i'm kind of being a petty bitch about the uh, instagram since i've already changed the handle once when we changed the first uh part of the title and mm -hmm. also because at because New Year's Eve movie is a pre-existing movie, they just didn't have Instagram <laughs> at the time that movie came out. So I was like, I should change this to the fit the second half of the title. Yeah. But then they changed the second half of the title too, and I'm just like, well, Fuck. how can I build a brand if we're changing the handle every <laughs> two yeah months? every five seconds? Like Jesus, these these followers are gonna get confused. No, and so I'm being kind of a petty bitch right now. It's fine. Yeah, because it's okay. it's okay to have those concerns and those frustrations. I own 24% of the LLC. This is all I get is to be a petty bitch. I mean, yeah, you know what? It, you you deserve to be. And, you know, you are absolutely allowed to voice your frustrations. And they're yeah. totally valid. Like, Real Horror Show isn't like a professional business. We haven't registered it as anything. Yeah. But even with the most minuscule things I want to do, I'm like, Stormy, is it okay if I... Join a Christmas card yeah. collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just like, yeah, dude. <laughs> it's all good. Let Sorry. me know how much. Can I change the font on the website? <laughs> yeah, this, this is all this is all totally legitimate listener. She's not just making this up. Like not even like even the most insignificant changes. It's yeah. just polite to ask your partners. Oh, absolutely. It is. And I absolutely appreciate it because sometimes, you know, like I don't focus on these small things. So it's nice yeah. to be asked. Yeah. And, and it's although like, the answer is probably always yes, it's still nice to be yeah. informed. But then again, I don't know anything. I'm just a small town church secretary who happens to have a master's degree from the George Washington University and is building businesses on her own anyway. Yeah. And hell yeah. I, I don't know anything. Um, Anyway, we're not just here to be petty bitches this evening. <laughs> petty bitches can definitely be like the mini soda name. I'm really feeling this. <laughs> it's really surveying what we're talking about right now. Yeah. <laughs> petty bitches because of reasons. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so anyway, the real horror show is the film industry. I'm not a fan of it. I'm going to stick to theater and publishing from now on mm -hmm. hell yeah and it's always good to have this experience even if it's not always a successful thing for you personally yeah because then you're able to you know be more wise and yeah even also, even yeah. if i cry like once a week over this oh man sam come it's, on don't let them get to you don't let them get you down girl i don't know it's fine i'm just like the type of person that just can't yeah be can. happy like yeah it's like oh this is a really good thing but what if 99 of these horrible things happen mm -hmm. because of this good thing? And it's such a big thing, you know, that it's very, like, it's very crushing when it doesn't go the way that it should have. And it's 
I can totally understand it. So if I were in your shoes, because I don't completely understand because I've never been in this situation, yeah. but if I was in your shoes, I would probably be really upset as upset as you yeah. for sure. Crying, yeah. angry, whatever it, it would be that I would express that emotion, but it would definitely be a negative one. You know, it's hard yeah. to, it's hard to find the positive, but all you can do is just become wiser and also share your experience yeah. with those are going to go through it soon and need some pointers. Yeah. And that's, that's what I want to do is I want to be transparent and we could have been super transparent because this is an indie movie that only like $20,000 is going into, but they, you know, chose to be like your typical Hollywood people about it. So here I am. Petty bitch, Sam. <laughs> Here's the title. Dude. Yeah. Here I am. Petty bitch, Sam. We should, that's. Oh, that's fantastic. like a Dr. Seuss book. That I was about to say, that's like a children's <laughs> book, dude. Amazing. That'll be, Thanks, that'll be my memoir title. Absolutely. Yeah. Memoir. You can write a couple memoir <laughs> in your life. Yeah. The Chronicles of um, Sam. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I consulted with Jesus, who we haven't spoken to in a little while, <laughs> since um, he he was like, here, read this book. I'm going on vacation. Oh, God. Sorry, Jesus. That was really <laughs> tough. And he tested us, obviously, because you know how Jesus sometimes yeah. likes to do that. But we yeah. we prevailed. The um, Lord loves to test. And we are stronger <laughs> because of it. Yeah, because in the year of our Lord, 2020, we're all being tested. And this is just another you know, fun little test. It's like, read this whole novel. And then if you can do it, I'll yeah. give you a gift and you can just go back to judging movies, which is easy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and speaking of movies, the movie assigned to us this week is <laughs> Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight. Whoa, what a fun title. <laughs> I know. It definitely didn't just catch my title on the Netflix screen. Whoa. Or catch my eye on the Netflix screen. <laughs> He caught my title. Nobody's sleeping in the woods tonight. Let me write that shit down. Uh, let's see. It was released in 2020. It is a Polish horror movie. It is hmm. a teen scream. Ooh. And the synopsis is addicted to technology. A group of teens attends a rehabilitation camp in the forest, but a sinister force there intends to take them offline forever. <laughs> Sorry, Ooh. I was holding in a burp. That's okay. There. I do that a lot during, like, when I'm teaching class, which is probably kind of gross, but yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it just makes you more relatable to uh, to the, the students. students. Like, I'm a human and I burp. <laughs> I have human things that happen in my body, dude. So this sounds like actually a pre. Hopefully, it's really fun. I no matter so. what, it better be fun. It's a teen scream. Yeah, I need some fun after. Oh, yeah. Two months of Midnight Sun. I know. I just need to chill big time because Midnight Sun was an undertaking for the history books of Real Horror Show. So. In current events, um, uh, states are re-entering lockdown phases. Oh, shit. Yeah. Virginia is starting uh, some new lockdown phases. Not as strict as at the beginning, but... Yeah. Definitely a little stricter, which I get. Um, maybe part of the problem here, my friends and I went out to dinner two weeks ago mm -hmm. to a Mexican place, and we sat outside, even though it was 40 degrees outside, and it doesn't have outdoor heating. And David yeah. and I got there late, so we didn't even cross through the restaurant to get there. We just came in through the outside. And I sat down, turned and looked through the window into this restaurant itself, and it was so packed full of people not wearing masks and I'm like oh yeah dude it's a nightmare yeah. out there um I a few weeks ago I went out to eat outdoors of course with my mm -hmm. mother um and then inside dude of course yeah. it's just freaking wall to wall I don't understand and when these people are waiting outside for their tables no mask fucking scooched in between each other just like it always mm -hmm. used to be and you know what like it makes me like remind myself of actually how gross that really yeah. was when you like sat super close like on top of people to scooch into the booths mm -hmm. to wait like over it over it dude yeah so yeah i appreciate that like you also still went out of your way to eat yeah. outside because it's okay to still go out to eat 
Um, but like doing it in the best way and safest way you can would be what Sam just did, which was like, and keep your fucking masks on until your waitress brings you your food. Yeah. Like be cool about it because that's like what I did too. I kept my mask on, um, just to be courteous to the server. Even whenever I noticed they were approaching while I was eating, I would stop to like place it over mm-hmm. my face for them to ask me if I like. Yeah, I, you know what I mean. So like, just do the. I thing. did that too, but I got caught off guard, so I usually have to use my hand <laughs> to cover my mouth. Yeah, it works in a pinch, which I used to do anyway yeah. because they always catch me while I'm chewing. So, I yeah, they do they do do yeah. that though. It's like still a thing, but in a pinch, your hand is better than nothing. It That's- just. Just wear your fucking masks and stay home when you can. Yeah. Good God. Fucking hell, just stay home when you can. I don't want to do the film industry. I would like to remain in the theater industry, please. But we can't do that until you wear your goddamn masks. Exactly. Exactly. And you know what? It's wild because when I'm looking at these, like, these daily cases and how they're shooting up and I'm looking at this chart. Like, and it kind of outlines how it was in March and how it is now. And it's worse than it's ever been with these cases mm-hmm. and how many. And it's just not letting up yeah. because of this thing that they're calling like COVID fatigue and people are just fucking over it. But it's not over you. And um, <laughs> I didn't recently start going back to the office because being home was too much and I don't get that much foot traffic. Where I work and I'm the only employee yeah. in the office. That's awesome. Man. And yeah. whenever I hear someone come in, I quickly put on my mask and it's chill. <laughs> it's chill and you're ready to go and you're like, hey, I have a mask on. What's up? But you know, it's, <laughs> we're getting close to a vaccine, it sounds, and uh, get vaccinated, yeah. you fucking pricks. Um, not to get political, but goddamn. Yeah, goddamn it. It's like, for for the love of God, get get vaccinated, you guys. Just get your flu shot, even if you can. Bear I got it. my flu shot for the first time in years. Me, me too, Sam. Like, I yeah, it's been years, and you know what? I was like, this year is is different, yeah. and I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do my best, yeah. and I'm not going out, but I can get my flu shot. So boom, I got it, and it was yeah. for free, and. It- and- like that it was wasn't cool. anything moral I had against the flu shot. It was mostly uh, people wait until they're actually sick to go get the flu shot. So you catch the flu while you're standing in line and then the <laughs> vaccine doesn't do shit for you. So, but I, I, I know how ironic. I, I had a doctor's appointment and they were like, would you like your flu shot today? And I was like, yes, I was hoping you would ask me. Yes. Yeah, dude, same, the same exact thing happened to me. I went to my yearly doctor's appointment like last month at the beginning of October. And I was like, well, if they don't ask me, I'm going to ask them. And they were like, you want your flu shot today? Which arm? And I was like, yeah, that was like the first thing. I'm like, well, I'm glad that's out of the way. Pretty excellent. Get your flu shots while you can. CVS, Kroger, I think even Walmart give flu shots. Yeah, you know, my husband went to a Rite Aid before work, and he was in and out, got the flu shot for free, did not have to make an appointment. So just boom, 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 boom. They they have you sign like one piece of paper, and then like they give you a shot and you can go off. It's so just like, if you're busy, like he's a bit he's busy and he got it right before work and he wasn't held up or he wasn't late. So it's all good. So no excuses. Uh, don't let me forget, I need to get my birth control out of the car so I don't get pregnant. Um, yeah, I- Sam. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to uh, wrap up. We are watching Nobody Sleeping Tonight. Yeah, Nobody Sleeping in the Woods yeah. Tonight. Our first Polish horror film. Yeah, this is going to be really cool. So, listeners, if you're listening... Watch it and you know, listen along in the next episode when we critique it. You can yeah, critique with you us for choosing, yeah, critique with us, not against yeah. us. <laughs> but I hope everyone has a swell week. Uh, when this comes out, we will be guesting on a couple of pods the debatable oh, yeah. pod, uh, Twitch live stream. I think that's at 10 o'clock yeah. on Mondays, very late uh-huh. for us, but we'll survive. <laughs> We'll survive because it'll be like it'll be fun. 
break week for me yeah. at least. Yeah, it'll be yeah, it'll be fun too. <laughs> that too, of and course. And uh, unfortunately, oh. I am bad and forgot the name of the other podcast we're guesting on. But we are talking about some new horror movie coming out. Uh, will, yeah, yeah. Is it the banana yeah, thing? yeah banana splits something like banana splits something movie. like that and. Yeah, if I can, I think I might be able to pull up what their name is. They are our twist. Welcome to our twisted mind, Sam. Is that what it uh, is? No, that would be us. Oh fuck! Um, uh, all bros. Oh all yeah, bros? the all bros podcast. We're talking about that new um, <laughs> animatronic horror movie, Banana Splits, or whatever it's called. I think. Yeah, spooky bananas. <laughs> but that's what. Spooky bananas. <laughs> spooky bananas is. A good title. But anyway, well. we'll see you then. See you then. So, fuck off. Have a swell evening. This is Real Horror Show signing Bye. off. Bye. Bye bye.